my new to me 1969 Camaro. Uh, those of you guys have been on the channel for a little while know that I had one before. Uh, I sold that because it was a little bit more of a project than I was looking for as far as the condition of the body and the rockers and the floors and wasn't really thinking it was the best idea to put a bunch of time and money into something that was going to need uh, all that much work. So sold it, uh, made a little bit of a profit and uh, set my sights on a, another car and uh, this one came up for sale locally, and uh, it is a lot of car for, for what I got it for. So let me bring you guys in, I'll give you a closer look. So here it is, 1969 Chevy Camaro Coupe. Those of you guys who know these cars might notice there's a couple things on this car that are not exactly factory, and uh, we'll go through those. First, just some high level stuff. Obviously the car is a metallic gray. Uh, it was painted uh, within the last year, I believe. Uh, super straight, super clean. Um, like I said, got a lot of flake in it. It's a little bit dirty right now because I've been driving it here and there, but you know, all new trim, new glass. 
new metal recently. Um, super nice car. So let me go into some of the things on the body that, that are different that, that you might notice. First thing uh, that I notice and that I'm not sure I'm a fan of yet is the bumpers and the front spoiler are completely molded in to the front end of the car. Normally, obviously, there'd be a gap here. This is completely molded in, smooth and painted. Same thing with the front splitter there. Completely molded into the seamless right into the fender. That's obviously different. It's cool. Um, I don't know if I would have built the car like that just because now I'm looking at it. I mean, this whole front clip has to come off as one giant you know, U-shaped piece. You know, none of these parts can detach from each other now. And uh, I do worry about this cracking over time. Quick little side story. The Camaro market, or the used car market, but especially, you know, classic Camaro market, especially the 69 Camaro, it's kind of like the housing market right now. I got top dollar for my car, but now was, and I was gonna take that money to buy another one. But like I said, it's kind of like the housing market where you can make a profit on your house, get great money for your house, but then you're right back in the pool with everyone else that's also looking for a house and you have to pay top dollar to get what you had before again, uh, if that makes any sense. So it took a few months searching around, but um, I think I got a great deal on this car. So I was able to look past a few things that I didn't like on how this guy built it and uh, just focus on the fact that it's you know 100% rust-free, clean, basically brand new build. Go over the rest of the stuff, it's a little different. Second thing, spoiler, completely molded in to the trunk. I do like that. Normally, you know, this would just be you know, two separate pieces, spoiler, or deck lid, spoiler. Uh, obviously, this is now one piece. Uh, looks really nice. The back of the car, same thing. Bumpers molded in to this quarter panel, tail panel, uh, all the way down there. Same deal with the tail lights. They're completely molded in to the rear deck. So, bumper, bumper also has cutouts for exhaust tips here, which you can see there. Um, I probably would have done dumps but you know, still looks, looks nice. Uh, also one thing that uh, most people or some people might not notice is the shaved drip rails. So a lot of cars from this era, especially the Camaros have what you call a drip rail here, which just as the name implies is designed to collect the water and you know, send it down the sides of the car. Um, so a lot of times when you're doing a full repaint or modifying the body anyways, a lot of guys like to shave the drip rail, which I do, I do like that as well. Looks super clean. So yeah, there's a general overview of the car. Um, like I said, really nice body, super straight, clean. I mean, the interior is the same deal. A lot of, this is a lot of money put into this car. It's got a full TMI interior, door panels, seats, dash pad, custom center console, rear seats, um, doubled in stereo, uh, decoded digital gauges. I mean, brand new headliner, you know, Four kicker speakers in the back, speakers in the kick panels down there, um, you know, carbon fiber, door sills. Just, just really, really nice, nice steering wheel. So yeah, interior looks just as good as the outside. So you guys can see why this car is attractive for me. I mean, a lot of money, a lot of money. I've got the receipts for it. Uh, a lot of money was spent on the body. A lot of money was spent on the interior. A lot of money was spent on the drivetrain. And I'll show you that once we get it up on the lift. Um, I haven't even seen it on the lift yet. Um, but it does have uh, a four-link rear, Ride Tech four-link rear, coilovers on all four corners, Willwood brakes on all four corners, tubular upper, upper and lower control arms, just tons and tons of money in suspension, body, paint. The only place the owner did not spend money, which is perfect for me, because even if it was a top-of-the-line big block, I'd be ripping it out, is uh, the motor. Um, I want to do an LS swap. That's what I said in my last video on the 69 Camaro. Let me show you guys what this thing's got hiding under the hood here. Boom. What you see in front of you is a 307 small block. At least that's what I'm told. Which uh, for you Camaro gurus out there, you Chevy small block gurus, uh, out of the box is about 200 horsepower. So that's not going to cut it. So... I'll get back there and we can confirm the casting number, but it's either a 307 or a 327 small block. It's got, you know, uh, Edelbrock intake, Holly carb, Holly four barrel, uh, a couple little trinkets here and there, but, you know, stock manifolds, it's not going to be putting out a ton of power. So, so this has got to go if we're, if we're keeping this car, but that's fine. Cause like I said, I'd rather get a good deal on a car 
that someone already spent all the money on the paint and body, which is the expensive stuff. And, you know, I can totally handle an LS swap. I think, you know, never done one, but I think we can handle it. So, yeah, uh, 307, I believe, small block, mild cam, intake, whatever. TH350, or it should be a TH350. It's a three-speed automatic. It's got the, uh, what do you call that, the saddle grip shifter there. Um, so, yeah, three-speed automatic. Basically a powertrain that a base model 69 Camaro with a V8 would have come with, um, you know, back in 1969. Uh, the VIN tag on the firewall uh, says that it was originally um, a V8 car. You'll never know if it was really an SS or not unless you actually have paperwork to back it up, but we do know it was originally a V8 car. Uh, originally, actually, it was Hugger Orange, which is a great color, and uh, I believe it had a black interior. Uh, obviously all that's changed in the last 50 years, but really, really solid car. So yeah, first things first, I haven't seen the underside other than crawling around, making sure it looks super solid just for me crawling around when I went to go look at it. Um, but I'd love to get it up on the lift, get a better look at the suspension, get a better look at everything else that's going on under there. So let's do it together. So let's get it up on the lift, see what we're dealing with. All right, guys, up in the air, got our Harbor Freight LED light. Let's go check it out. So right off the bat, like I said, full ride tech, lower upper control arms, sway bar, ride tech coilovers, Willwood brakes, behind these US Rambler mags. Looks nice. So pretty dialed front suspension. Um, I'm not sure if those are factory knuckles or not. I want to look into that because I might even want, I picked up a set of uh, C6 Z06 brakes I was gonna use in my last car, but I might even wanna use those on this. So we'll look into that. Wheel wells look good, frame looks excellent. Same thing on this side, obviously. Stock uh, steering system here. Here's your small block Chevy in small block Chevy orange. I don't know if that's the correct terminology or not. Here's a what is this, like an inch and a half, maybe two inch? This is what happens uh, when you don't get a mandrel bent exhaust system. See how the pipe necks down at the bend? That's why in performance applications, a mandrel bend is really important because you could have two inch exhaust right here. And then at the bend, you really only got inch and a half or inch and three quarters. So you hear people using mandrel bends. It's a perfect example why. But this is just a little 307. I actually think we're going to get up there. See if we can read the casting number in a little bit. See if we can see what the details on this motor are. Here's our TH350 pan shift linkage. And here's the really good stuff. This is what I really care about. You see those floors? All one piece. No patches. No obviously seam sealed areas. All one piece. So either this car has original floors or whoever replaced them did a one piece floor pan, which is pretty sweet. So no rust in any of the floors. Rockers look awesome. Here's my magnetic light. All around. Super, super solid. That's what I care about. Uh, I think I had them open in the video. Maybe you guys could hear, but did wire in electric cutouts on both sides. This Magnaflow muffler, and here's where the real good stuff is. Ride Tech 4-link, coilovers, again, Willwood brakes. Uh, unfortunately, it still has the stock 10-bolt, but in this case where it was just a 307 and a TH350, the 10-bolt's probably more than adequate, but what we plan to do with this car, 10-bolt's not gonna cut it, so we'll probably have to order a nine inch for this car, but that's the money shot right there. The four links look so good on these things. Newer fuel tank. I mean, basically everything under here looks brand new. I think this whole build has like under a thousand miles on it. So again, for a 52, 53 now year old car, this thing looks really, really good. Really good platform to start with. So we, we can work with this. Oh, actually here's a little bit of a hint right here. So this whole underside was undercoated. This looks like bed liner. And obviously they didn't prep 
right in this spot right here because it looks like it's peeled back a little bit but you can see that is brand new metal right there so at one point this car had a whole floor put in it which is much better my old camaro had i don't know if i showed this on video or not but both rear sections had patches in them at least one maybe both front sections had patches in them it was just all patched together so nice to see a nice clean floor clean rockers no bondo haven't seen any bondo yet um so yeah really like that under there i mean i basically paid the same price for this car that i sold my old one for it's like three or four times the car it is just so much more for the money so even though it took a while to find and it's not exactly how i would have built it you know for what 69 camaros are going for right now you know, we stole this thing. So happy about that. All right. Well, on GM small blocks and also big blocks, probably most GM, you know, old school Chevys, the casting number is on the back pad, back driver's side pad of the block, um, which in this case is kind of covered by the master cylinder and a couple other things. So I think it might actually be easier to use my new boroscope and uh, stick it right up yonder see if we can see the number you can see what i'm talking about up there there's really not any access so if we just use the borescope read the number that's right on this pad right here we can find out if this block is out of a 69 there's a chance it's the original motor not that i care um hopefully give us some direction as to what actually this motor is the owner said it was a 307 who knows maybe it is maybe it isn't and uh you know hopefully give us some more information on this thing so let's uh get the borescope up there and see what we find 39146 three, three, six. six. Okay. Let's see what the internet tells us. All right, so we got our casting number there, 3914636 on the old interwebs here which tells us that that casting number is a 68 production year 307 with two volt mains. So I'm not sure, maybe you uh, Camaro gurus can confirm if the block was cast in 68, you know, does that mean that it went into a 69 model year car or, or is this web page that I'm on supposed to be, if it says 68, it was definitely supposed to be in a 68 car. Just out of curiosity, I don't know. <clears throat> like I said, either way, I'm not really one of those guys that cares about, you know, original motor. If you can't already tell, this thing is so far gone from, you know, original that it doesn't really matter. In addition to the fact that there was probably hundreds of thousands of 307 base model plain Jane, you know, 69 Camaros that came out. Uh, not hundreds of thousands because they only made a quarter million, but, you know, many, many thousands of this exact car. It's not a rare Z28. It's not even, I don't even think it's an SS considering it has a 10 volt rear still. Um, so... Long story short, it's going out, but I did want to find out what it was just so that when we sell it, uh, we can you know accurately describe it. Also, thanks to the internet, was able to determine that we have a TH350 in this thing. Just in case anyone's wondering how you did that, there's a couple ways. One, you can count the bolts on the pan here. I guess it's gotta be 13 bolts. Um, the vacuum regulator, modulator, whatever you wanna call this thing, is on the back right. And then the overall length, you can measure from the bell housing end to where the tail shaft housing meets up. I think it's like 22 and a quarter inches. Mine meets all of these specifications. Uh, so it is definitely 100% a TH350. So let's talk about the plan. Made a little list over there. Some of the major things we want to tackle in this build. And then as the videos progress, we can kind of break it up into little things. But this is our winter project, 2022. Last year we had the twin turbo Z06. That's done, covered up for winter. Now we need something to do or I'll lose my mind. So we picked up another one. So let's uh, get over the whiteboard and I'll show you what we got planned. Well, looks like old man winter has moved in. So uh, I think it's safe to start a winter project. So 
Let's go take a look at the whiteboard and see what we got in store for this thing. So as I mentioned, the goal for this car is pro touring. You know, we don't care about numbers matching. I don't really care. This is the original 307 engine, which it might not be since the casting number says it's 1968. Um, that stuff just doesn't do anything for me. I mean, a 69 Camaro with a sweet LS swap, six speed, you know, some modern conveniences, you know, rides good with the modern suspension, big disc brakes. That's what gets me going. So uh, that being said, let's look at the list. Here's a list of major items that we would like to do to the Camaro. This is probably, you know, depending on how quickly you, you work, up to years worth of work. So uh, a lot of these are probably going to be broken down into, you know, multiple YouTube videos. But let's quickly go through them. So most important thing, obviously, motor. 307 is not going to cut it. Uh, we want to do an LS swap. I'm looking around for an LS3 T56 six-speed. Uh, I'd like to find a wrecked, like, fifth-gen Camaro. Um, get the LS3 and, and six-speed out of that. And then, you know, sell some of the other parts to uh, recoup some money. Uh, I could just find an LS3 and TR6060 or T56 uh, and just buy one of those, but they're like six, seven grand. Um, so if we can get in a little bit cheaper than that by doing the work ourselves to pull the motor and uh, selling some of the other parts, that'd be great. Uh, mini tub, so we can fit wider tires. You know, these 60s cars have very, you know, tires were thin back then. So, because uh, cars weren't making more than maybe 400 horsepower. So the wheel tubs don't allow a very big tire. It's one thing they didn't do when they built this car. Subframe connectors, this is what we call a unibody car. So there's a front subframe and basically the rear subframe. And the only thing that holds the car together in the center is the roof and the floor, basically. Um, so really common modification is uh, connectors that tie the front and rear together. Most of you guys are familiar with subframe connectors. Uh, Ford 9-inch rear. Um, this car currently has a, a GM 10 bolt. So there it is. Uh, normally this would be fine for what's in there now with about 200 horsepower and an automatic transmission. And some guys have built their 10 bolt to be pretty stout, but as soon as you start getting into, you know, LS swap with four, five, 600 horsepower, you're going to destroy 10 bolts. So really need to put a nine inch rear in this thing. With the mini tub, like to do some wider wheels and tires. Not sure on that yet. I'm gonna control all this with a Holly Terminator. And uh, I also have some Z06 brakes. Um, like I said, it's got Willwoods on all four corners, but just a little four piston guys right here. So just like the brakes on this car, I picked these up for a song. These are six piston, you know, factory C6 Z06 brakes. So if we can get some spindles to make these work on the front, that'd be sweet. So put those away for now. So yeah, you know, one minute summary on uh, a ton, ton of work. But yeah, main goal is an LS Pro Touring build. As far as what I'm going to do first, I think I'm going to work on tracking down a motor and transmission. That's obviously the most important thing. Uh, in the meantime, I think that we can pull the factory 307 and TH350 out of this thing and uh, start making room for the LS. Really excited for this project, guys. I think we got a good, good solid foundation here for an awesome LS swap. But yeah, just wanted to introduce you guys to the car. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this build. I'm gonna be going really hard on this build this winter, try and get it running and driving by springtime, which it's the middle of winter now, but you know, spring's gonna be here before you know it. So we gotta get cracking. So I'm gonna start looking for the components I need, motor mounts, transmission mounts, motor and transmission. Yeah, next video we'll be pulling the motor and I uh, should have a better idea of uh, what we're doing for drivetrain. So see you guys then.